So, uh, Jonan told me that the theme of this was Pokemon, Woo! and <laughs> I to, so I have to say that uh, I've never watched Pokemon or played the game or anything, so I looked it up on Wikipedia and found the most uh, distressing quote I think I've seen, uh, centered around fictional creatures that we train to fight each other for sport. <laughs> this is the first sentence of Wikipedia. This is a really aggressive start. Um, so. Uh, so my 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 actual talk is about uh, Ruby gems. Got to catch them all, and this sort of style that we we tend to do, where we acquire more and more and more gems. This happened a lot more in earlier versions of Rails. But um, this is a this is a gem file, which is certainly not from the project I work on at work. At all. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. Um, <laughs> so I was looking at this gem file. I'm like, I, I mean, not looking at this gem pile and thinking, I have no idea what any of these are, why pry by bug is tied to a version, what most of these do, because they're all different. Um, I can't even tell which is a dev tool and is okay to ignore and get rid of. Um, so the first thing I did was I just went through and I grouped everything. Um, I, these, this is like built into gem files. You can group things by production, and generally those are things like your database. Uh, you can, and, and here's a cool one. There's the group development and test, and I have a pet peeve here, because everyone throws absolutely everything into development and test, but it's not necessary. Um, in, in fact, there's a lot of value in throwing things into specifically development or test. So my rule here is that the only thing that goes into development comma test are things that add command line features, like our spec on the command line or Cucumber. Literally nothing else is allowed in there. I would be happier if I was allowed to duplicate our spec in development test and test, so it's really clear, but Bundler doesn't like that. So, so only things that are command line executables uh, go in dev test. Things in development are things that we don't care about the version of, uh, I can totally blow away at any point, and it's not going to affect the project. I can upgrade the version at any point, and it's not going to affect the project. Might piss off my coworkers, but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> nice, but. And then um, group test, I really don't want to mess with too often, because that's going to break all the tests. But at least I can run the tests and find out if it's going to break. So that's pretty OK. Um, so that's, that's really nice to have this, this grouping. So the next thing I did uh, was I started commenting, because I, I literally had no idea what most of these gems were. And another big aspect of it was that I didn't even know how to use the gems uh, when they added command line options, like pry remote. And so, so you can see in the comments, I added like backtick and then the command line thing that I would use for it. Um, I also commented, like, why why use bybug versus debugger? Oh, because bybug is the 2.1 version or, or whatever. Um, I didn't comment on why this pry bybug had to be version to a specific thing, because I didn't know at the time. But it turns out it just doesn't work prior to remote. But that's the type of thing I want to see in those comments. You can also group them uh, with comments right above. This will make your coworkers so happy. So the last, and this is the biggest pet peeve I have, I wish that everyone would do require false on almost everything. All that does is means that it, it just makes it so that in some file where I want to use RuboCop or uh, whatever, I need to require RuboCop. Uh, there was a talk a little while ago by David Salis and Ben Weintraub about the problems with awesome print, which is a cool gem, but uh, has terrible performance. If you if you require it automatically, uh, so if it just had a require false tagged on the end, it wouldn't affect my development time. It wouldn't affect my test runner time. When I dropped awesome print out of our test suite, we gained a second. Now that's not not a lot. But it's not nothing either. Uh, sorry for people who are newer to Rail or Ruby. Um, yeah. What does require false do? Sorry. Uh, so all the. The, one of the first things that Bundler does when it loads up uh, a project, in Rails at least, 
is it, uh, it calls require on every single one of these gems automatically. So, um, so Watcher and Zentest, which aren't actually necessary for the running of an application, are still getting loaded into active memory as soon as I run Rails server. Um, and that's, that's a problem for me. So throwing require false means that those, those are actually command line libraries. There's no reason to have them in memory at all. Um, and so throwing require false on there says, don't bother loading this in memory. I'll load it through some other means, command line, or I'll specifically require. Um, pry is another one where uh, I've gone through the code base and I've expunged all, all areas that say require pry. Um, and I've just said, hey, coworkers, it's not that hard to make a macro that says require pry, comma, pry, or binding that pry, um, just to, to load up the library and get it into the debugger land. It's not that hard. But it really does make a huge performance difference to require false so that it doesn't load those things. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the hash syntax. <laughs> Sorry, come on. Like, one or the other, right? <laughs> so, we're going to ignore that. Um, <laughs> my company is ha uses hash rockets. It wasn't worth fighting over. So, uh, so <laughs> it's not like just a passive aggressive one. <laughs> oh, no, oh uh, the, the mixture, there's a little yeah. tangier. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, that was here. probably passive aggressive. Yeah, that was, that's <laughs> that's so you can tell because it's the bottom of the jump. Yeah. Line, yeah. Um, so you don't have to catch them all. But if you happen to, because we love doing it, at least keep them in order. Group them. Comment them and require them less often. Thank you.